Let's talk simple user and group management inside of Ubuntu. Of course, I'm on Amazon Web Services here. Any Linux command line is probably going to work for this. So let's start with the add user command. And I'll go ahead and I will add a user and I will name that user Jeff. And so on Ubuntu, um, if we look at Let's go ahead and just run that that I just typed though. Add user Jeff, and it's gonna ask for a password, an initial password. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. And it's gonna ask for some extra information. This stuff doesn't matter. You can leave it blank. So the best way to get through these fields is to just hit enter. You can do it five times. One, two, three, four, five. Is the information correct? Yes. So now we've created a user, Jeff. Let's do a CD period period into the home directory. And if we look inside of home here, we can see that we've got all the different users. So I can look in here and know right off the bat that I have Jeff, Joe, Sue, and a user Ubuntu here on this. So I can see there are other users that have been created on this system as well. So let's take a look at what happened when we created that user. If I do an LS, we can see that we have our user Jeff here. A couple of key files were modified though. So if I pico Etsy password, that's an important one to keep an eye on. The structure of Etsy password is important. Um, and so let's break it down. If we look down here at the bottom, we can see we have Jeff that was created down here. We have an X, he's in group. He's at user ID 1003. And he's also got his own group, group ID of 1003 as well. We've got his home directory of home Jeff. And we see that um, he is utilizing the bin bash shell when he logs in. Now, one of the things we can look at here is we have a user on this system called LXD, for example. And LXD has a shell of bin false which means you can't log in with this user. This user won't have any kind of command shell. You won't be able to have any user interaction through a command shell like we have here. And that's one thing that you can kind of look for. If you want to disable a user, you could change this to bin false and Jeff will no longer be allowed to log in. And I have this um, Etsy password file fields linked in the same folders the videos if you're in my class. You can kind of see what uh, these are all about here. This X indicates the password is being stored in Etsy shadow, and we'll take a look at that in an encrypted format. Uh, the third one is the user ID, and then we have the group ID. Those are important. Um, six is the user's home directory. Seven is the command shell. User ID info is a comment field uh, to add extra information, and we saw several co uh, commas that were in R. So that's just a brief breakdown of how that works. One of the things you might look for if you're like a Cyber Patriot competitor is if you have a user on the system that's in group zero, zero, user ID zero, uh, well, it would be something like 1003 maybe, but is in the uh, group zero, could be zero, zero. That's what's been assigned to root. And these are all user permissions and group permissions are assigned on fi but to files and folders all over Linux, right? And so based on what files have been assigned that root can use, right, we don't want Jeff to also have access to all of those things as well, possibly, unless, you know, if Jeff's not supposed to be an administrator. But look for that zero in these first in fields three and four here because that's a red flag that this user has more permissions than he or she might need. Another file we'll want to look at is uh, Etsy group is another one. And these are all of the groups that are on the system. And again, these groups don't have permissions assigned to them. You know, these groups exist. And then as you look around the file system, you will see that files and folders have group owners with permissions. And so that's how uh, group permissions are assigned uh, around Linux. It's all assigned to files and folders. And as we look through some of these, we can see that we have the CD-ROM group. This means that a password is not being used for the group. 
We have our group ID, referred to as GID. You'll see that a lot. And uh, these are members of the group. So if I wanted to, for some reason, add Jeff to the CD-ROM group, I could add comma Jeff there. And now Jeff would be a member of the CD-ROM group, any file or folder that had a CD-ROM. The CD-ROM group is the group owner. Jeff would also have access to that file or folder. Uh, another file is uh, Etsy Shadow. We're going to want to keep an eye on that one as well. And this contains encrypted passwords. And so we can see that our root user here doesn't have a password. We can't log in as root here uh, on standard Ubuntu systems. Um, we have our Ubuntu user. And on my system, you can see that the Ubuntu user doesn't have a password because I'm on EC2 and it's all done via public private keys. So I don't have a, I can access it, but there's no password. These users that I've created, uh, Joe, I created a user Joe and Jeff, I deleted Sue a second ago, uh, have an encrypted password field here. And if bad guys are able to exfiltrate this data, uh, it is possible to brute force, if the password is simple enough, this encrypted password field here. It's interesting to note here at the beginning, we see this dollar sign six. If you Google for understanding Etsy shadow, you'll see that this flags the type of hash this is. This is a SHA-512 dollar sign six. And these uh, fields out here provide information about uh, things like minimum password, uh, the minimum days required uh, before the password has to change. Um, essentially, it's password aging and account lockout features here. And you can kind of look up what these different fields are in terms of how they apply to things like when does this password need to be changed? How long has it been since this password has been, you know, this uh, particular account has been locked out, etc. But the uh, Etsy password file is important because we don't want to see passwords configured on users that should not be logging in. For example, the www-data um, user has no reason to like SSH to this computer and be able to log in. So we certainly should not see a password there. All right, I'm going to wind up this video. That's just your brief overview. Uh, we'll continue to look at user and group management in part two.